Hey everyone, and welcome back to Inside Gaming for Saturday. Yeah, what are we doing here? What are, in the office we should be on a holiday? Home, playing games and hanging out with our family. I should be with my eight kids. Mom, Dad, where are you? <laughs> I should be <laughs> digging my some dead guy out of the chimney right now. Yeah, it was 2019 the year that loot boxes started dying. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they're still in games, a lot of games, and they still make buttloads of money. Yeah, but in 2019, we seem to hit a bit of a tipping point as loot boxes ran headfirst into their most implacable of foes, politicians. Stop! Yeah, more and more governments around the world started taking a very hard look at the practice, and regulation cannot be far behind. Yeah, meanwhile, the games industry is running scared and starting to look into alternative ways of getting more money out of us. Yeah, they are not gonna give up on monetization. Yet, when it comes to loot boxes, though, it seems like their days might be numbered. Biggest news this year when it comes to loot boxes came out of the UK. Brian, what you got for us? Yeah, so this was huge. Back in October of 2019, a commissioner in the UK released a very scathing report after they interviewed dozens of children who played all kinds of video games from FIFA to Fortnite. The only two games <laughs> that matter. The two worst in terms of monetization. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the report was called Gaming the System. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Uh, it was based on interviews with a group of 29 kids ages 10 to 16 who play a variety of video games like Call of Duty, Minecraft, and FIFA. Again, the only games that matter. Yeah, well, Minecraft's pretty good. The study was very negative towards loot boxes. Oh no. Saying that they can lead to kids spending hundreds of pounds. They call money pounds. <laughs> pounds over in there. In England. Yeah. And leaving children feeling like they are gambling. I, I'm pretty sure you've discussed this before, but that's a cool thing. <laughs> gambling is cool. Almost every kid surveyed said that they spend money on in-game purchases, whether whether it was on cosmetics in Fortnite or for better players in FIFA's ultimate team mode. Yeah, Commissioner made a number of recommendations like limiting how much players can spend per day and turning off in-game spending by default for children. It was also called for games to have a warning label if they have in-game spending and said that the government should regulate loot boxes as gambling. Yeah, so it went on to say, given that gambling is not allowed in children's offline lives, its presence in their online lives requires close attention. If there are concerns around exposure to gambling in an early Early age offline, then the same concern should translate into the online world. And it's that G word that could be the death knell for loot boxes. Yeah, it's not just in the UK either. Regulators in Belgium and the Netherlands have also found that loot boxes violate their own gambling laws. Yep, Netherlands banned them after the Dutch Gaming Authority. <laughs> Oh, not the DGA! The DGA. <laughs> no, not the DGA! <laughs> Ruled last year that some loot boxes could be classified as gambling, specifically those in FIFA 18, Dota 2, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and Rocket League. I'm from the DGA. Nobody's that good at shocker. Uh, also in 2018, the Belgium Gaming Commission. What? Not the BGC2! Found that loot boxes were in violation of gambling legislation and ordered them removed from games in that country or risk a fine and prison time. They swing in through your window and night vision gear. We have to take your six-year-old dick. So yeah, the UK would be the biggest country to ban loot boxes, and obviously it could have severe consequences for the practice. It's a much bigger economy, and it's not hard to imagine other countries in Europe following its lead. The games industry has argued that since loot box prizes can't be exchanged for cash, then they don't meet the definition of gambling. What is the definition of gambling exactly? Does it have to be cash? Yeah, it's sort of, that's the, I think they're making a very uh, legalistic argument. Well, yeah. we're not giving you cash for this, so it's not gambling. Sure. Uh, yeah, Brian, the uh, loot. You can... That was good. Brian, go ahead. Yeah, but the UK report argues that loot box rewards can be cashed out on illegal third-party sites, mm. so they do have some value. What's more, it said that even if they're not worth actual money, loot box rewards still are valuable because they help them win games, aka FIFA, like you were saying. You're getting better players, you're gonna beat your friends. That has value. Yeah, I mean, as a Saudi prince myself, I don't have time. <laughs> as the report put it, simply winning the game is enough to persuade some children to spend enormous sums. Gambling laws need updating to reflect the reality of children's experiences with spending money within games. Yeah, and uh, that argument could be what really signaled the end of loot boxes in 2019. It's not just in the UK either. Here in the good old US and a, a senator also called for them to be banned in 2019. Oh, yeah. hell yeah, daddy's here and he's ready to Fuck. Put that boot on my neck. So this was from Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri. He proposed a loot box bill, this is earlier this year, that would make it a finable offense for publishers to put loot boxes in games that target children or which are played by children. It would also ban pay to win mechanics in those games. So the UK is one thing, but if the US does this, that's a 
fucking cataclysm for the video game industry. Yeah, so Holly told Kotaku that he introduced the bill after hearing from parents of kids, as well as gamers, who are concerned about developers, quote, basically adding casinos to children's games. True. Now, if we, had, if we had casinos at playgrounds, now Ooh. we're talking. Like a guy in a shark skin suit standing in the corner, like overseeing <laughs> everything. Like the That's toothpick, like a cowboy hat with like some kind of animal's teeth on it. <laughs> yeah, good old Josh Hawley said, we don't allow actual casinos to exploit children in this way. Why should we allow the gaming industry to do so? His bill didn't pass, but it helped put the issue on the national radar here in the US. And it comes after state lawmakers in Hawaii also introduced legislation to ban loot boxes and games. The issue isn't gonna go away, but there are signs that this is a bipartisan issue, which is very, very bad for loot boxes. If there's one thing we can come together and agree on, <laughs> apparently <laughs> oh, it's loot yeah. boxes. For now, loot boxes continue to make a lot of money for the big publishers like EA, who relies on loot box mechanisms like FIFA Ultimate Team for a major part of their revenue. Hmm, how much revenue are we talking here? Well, I don't have current numbers, but in 2017, and we've used the stat before, it was reported that FIFA's Ultimate Team mode was worth $800 million annually. Oh. That is massive. That's not a side business. That's the main business. One analyst estimated that a third of all EA's annual sales came from loot box related mechanism. Activision Blizzard, it was 18%. Take-Two Interactive, which owns Rockstar and 2K, 11%. So loot boxes Ooh. are a major, major financial pillar of the video game industry. It's not just the sales of the game themselves. It's how they can monetize you once they get you in there. With all that money comes horror stories of people who spent way too much on them, like the dude who spent $10,000 in FIFA before realizing it's not worth it. <laughs> or a RuneScape player who reportedly spent $62,000 oh. in the game. Or the biggest example we found is someone who spent more than $150,000 in a mobile Transformers game. <laughs> So it sounds like the kinds of losses you'd hear from problem gamblers, so maybe Holly was right to compare them to casinos. Despite those horror stories, the gaming industry has, to no one's surprise, defended loot boxes, sometimes in hilarious ways. Oh, really? Brian, how so? Earlier this year, there was a lot of loot box news this year. An EA representative infamously told UK lawmakers that loot boxes were merely surprise mechanics that were, quote, actually quite ethical been part of toys for years, whether it's Kinder Eggs or Hatchimals or LOL Surprise. Um, we do think the way that we have implemented these kind of mechanics, and, and FIFA of course is our big one, our FIFA Ultimate Team and our packs, is actually quite ethical and quite fun. I hope that can sleep at night. They probably can on a pile of money, but oh, still, I'm sure they're that's fine. some shady stuff. Yeah, they even compared them to toys like Kinder Eggs and Hatchimals. Despite loot boxes being quite, quite ethical, ethical and quite, quite fun. fun, the industry is also quietly backing down on them at least a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Kind of yeah. Mm, earlier this year, all three of the big console companies, as well as a bunch of major publishers, have said they will force games to disclose their odds in their loot boxes by 2020. They're also trying to come up with creative ways around any possible regulation. Mm, You've yeah. got a 100% chance of giving us a lot of money. No questions asked. Valve recently added a new item for Counter-Strike players in France called an X-ray scanner that lets you see what's inside a loot box before you open it. Entirely defeats the point of a loot box, so I don't yeah. know why they're hanging onto this by a thread at this point, but. Yeah, we're also seeing some other big franchises like Call of Duty, Destiny 2, and others start to shift to a battle pass system. Well, while some games and companies are moving away from loot boxes, other games just simply aren't. Yeah, I mean, they're still out there, and some of the ones that are loaded down with loot boxes and other microtransactions transactions are still selling very well. NBA 2K20, tons of microtransaction, an actual slot machine. <laughs> it's, one <of> the, <laughs> it's one of the best selling games of the year of 2019 here in the US. It's got a 95 year old woman in a rascal scooter smoking a Virginia Slim hunched over it. And of course, mobile games remain an overly monetized hellscape where the free to play model reigns supreme. So yeah, loot boxes aren't dead, at least not yet. Yeah, still though, change does take time, especially when it comes to video games. Yeah, they fly under the radar because lawmakers often don't have a clue about what's going on because a lot of them are too old to even know what a video game is, much less a Honestly, loot yeah. box. But eventually they're gonna hear from angry parents or their own kids might drop a few thousand bucks on virtual soccer players. <laughs> then it's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we're starting to see in the US and the UK while the loot box party is still going on. It seems like somebody's called the cops. Yeah, man. And uh, the gaming industry better watch out or it might end up suffering the consequences. Ooh. <laughs> Spoiler, it won't. No, it won't. No. Yeah, they're gonna no. send some EA CEO to prison. Okay. Sure. <laughs>
Cool. It sounds like they came away concluding that the industry's business model exploits kids, mm. and they have some pretty strong recommendations, like reclassifying loot boxes as gambling. That's it. That's what we've been waiting for. So yeah, no big deal. It would just fundamentally change the entire business model for video games in a major market. I'm sure they'll be cool about that and just let it happen. Yeah. It's the latest sign.